Okay, so this video is going to be going over quite a bit from the upcoming consoles, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Scarlet, to the Vive Cosmos, which we finally got reviews on, to a couple new players in the VR field, and finally, we've got a quick update on side loading for the Oculus Quest, and what Facebook is saying about all that, as well as, well, it, it's a whole mess. So, you guys remember Mark Cerny, right? He's the guy who went to Wired earlier this year and conducted an interview with them confirming a lot of the rumored details surrounding the PlayStation 5. Well, he did another interview earlier this week, and in that interview, he gave a lot more details not only about the solid state drive that we'll be able to expect in the upcoming console, but also a little bit more about the controller itself. So, one of the major things he touched on in, in part of this interview was that many times when developing a game, in order to expedite loading times, they will put out or they will place commonly used assets at multiple places in the disk so that it will take far less time in order to load whatever whatever areas or environments are necessary to render. However, because the solid state drive operates a lot faster and more efficiently than a hard disk drive does, they are able to do away with that practice, largely because not only will the PlayStation 5 have this technology, but the Project Scarlet Xbox will as well. That being said, they're able to either make more game, more gameplay available on the disc, or they will make the games smaller. Either way, it's going to be better for you. Because then that way, when you're buying them off the, off the PlayStation Store or the Microsoft Store or whatever it is on Xbox, I think it's Microsoft Store, anyway. When, when you're buying them off the digital store, it's going to take far less space. And all that being said, um, makes everybody happy, both the players and the developers. That means they have to spend less time and you don't have to wait so long and you actually get more gameplay out of, the, out of it. The next big thing he did talk about was the controller, which in itself is expected to be a higher-end PlayStation 4 controller, where the, the rumble mechanics and the haptic feedback that you can expect out of the triggers or L2 and R2 buttons will be significantly enhanced. What I mean by that is that, one, well, one of the examples they used in the article was when you're driving down a road in a PlayStation 5 render of GTA or Gran Turismo Sport, you'll actually be able to feel the difference on the through your controller, what, whether you're driving on the dirt or on pavement. You'll actually be able to feel the difference through your controller simply because of the feedback that it is capable of giving. Right now, your typical your typical PlayStation 4 controller, I have not found a, a licensed one for less than $40. For something like this, I would expect, I, I don't know, maybe $70, $80 for a single controller. That being said, you'll still get one at launch when the, thing, when the system itself launches for about $500, $600 next year. Uh, and he... As part of this interview, he also went on to confirm that the upcoming system will launch by and even before holiday 2020. So, all things going according to plan, we will be able to expect the consoles next year. And for those of you wondering, the main reason these upcoming consoles, the PlayStation 5, and the Xbox Scarlet won't be launching until late next year is because of AMD. The GPU that we can expect in these upcoming consoles, the AMD Navi, 
is late. Well, it's going to be late. And as a result, everything that relies on it, well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you get the whole cause and effect thing. Oh, I almost forgot. So, you, you know that that rumored detail about the V-shaped PlayStation 5? Well, it turns out that that is actually true. Um, according to a, a new report, a, an insider leak supposedly claims that that, that leaked PS5 design is true. However, as an, this needs to be taken with a grain of salt, however, because one of the one of the other claims he made was that Xbox Scarlet was expected to be launching with a an onboard camera. And Microsoft spokesperson denied to Gizmodo that any Scarlet camera technology was in development. Or that any such camera had been built, delivered to developers. So, because that camera thing was being quoted by the same guy that's quoting the, the V-shaped PlayStation 5, well, grain of salt. So, anyway. On a brighter note, though, one of the better things that we can expect out of the upcoming PlayStation 5 is the new or the upcoming PlayStation Assist app, where you will actually be able to get hints and tips on your phone, like your your real mobile phone, and even through the game to tell you how to complete certain objectives or any kinds of other stuff like that. The example used in this article is uh, your dragonborn trying to defeat Miramalnir, the uh, the very first dragon you fight in Skyrim. So, hopefully, true. Uh, but at the same time, whether or not it's actually going to be launched is a whole nother question entirely. Oh, and you want to know something amazing? According to a new patent application, we may actually have confirmation that the upcoming PlayStation VR version 2 is going to be wireless. This thing is... And it's likely going to solve a lot of the tracking problems that we as PlayStation VR users are experiencing. Because it, by the look of the application itself, it's going to be loaded with cameras on the front, on the side, on the back itself of, of the headset as well as, well, it, it's going to provide better inside-out tracking rather than the outside-in we currently experience with the PlayStation camera we have mounted wherever it is they have it mounted, whether it's on top of your TV, somewhere else in the room, wherever. But it's a better experience. So far, we've been waiting to hear what Xbox is going to do in response to the PlayStation VR headset. And there has been a rumor circulating in response to this that is going to allow for support for the for the Oculus Rift S headset. However, it has recently been brought to my attention that they are actually possibly developing new in-house hardware instead of, or maybe in tandem with said support. All of this is suggesting something that's actually capable of rivaling this, but as this would be Microsoft's or well, Xbox's first foray into this field, well, it kind of makes me think that they're not really ready for it. However, over the last few years, they have in fact acquired quite a few studios which have experienced developing games for the field, so it's very possible that they may actually have the talent necessary to give them the expertise or guidance necessary to develop that hardware. 
So hopefully whatever they actually follow through on, whether it port for the Rift S or their own in-house hardware, it'll be something good. So the review for in for the HTC Vive conference set. Preparation for the video, I reviewed a couple different ones. One of them by Road to VR, the other by Tom's Hardware. Road to VR, they compared it to a couple other major headsets you'll see in our landscape, namely the Oculus Rift S Valve Index. What that one boiled down to was you can save dollars go for the oculus rift s and have an either equal or possibly even better experience depending on your need or comfort or you can go or you can spend the extra three hundred dollars and go for the valve index for the significantly more well more valuable experience that you'd be able to experience there as the Cosmos itself is sitting at a hefty price point $700. Although the faceplate itself is going to be modular, you'll be able to change it as it comes and goes with a couple updates and upgrades on the horizon as it is. Just the simple fact that the pillow itself coupled with the way the uh, the visor is going to be positioned around your face means that you will either be uncomfortable or you won't be able to see. You'll have to pick between one of those two throughout the course of your playtime with this head. Uh, now as far as the Tom's hardware review is concerned, that one compared it to the original version of the and as a part of that review, long story short, they said it was a clear upgrade. While the core price point may have changed, that did not include the base station or the tracking or the controllers or anything else that you would need to set up the regular vibe. For that full setup, it would run you about $800, as opposed to the $700 that the Vive Cosmos is going to run you. But even still, by the sounds of it, your better experience is going to be, well, it, it's not going to come from a Vive Cosmos. So you may as well search it if you're looking for that, that either middle tier, low, or high tier, or, or whatever it is you're in the, in the market for. Hopefully, you're able to find it soon. Personally, I would say uh, save up your money, like a lot of it, and go for the Pimax 8KX. As I explained in a previous video, that one is going to be the best way to feature-proof your VR setup, as it's already able to max out. A lot of the existent hardware available. So hopefully you're able to find a headset that works for you, but it likely won't be the H5 cost. Some of you may remember when the Oculus Quest launched back in May, it had a pretty strict curation policy. In fact, it still does. However, they've made it a little bit worse. Up until this point, You've been able to sideload your stuff, you a sideloader, going through developer mode and taking the steps necessary to download your mods and custom stuff for all of your software that, that you have installed on your quest. However, Facebook has recently updated their content guidelines in such a way that imply that sideloading or modding your stuff specifically through sideloading or using that specific method may very well result in deletion or removal of your account. And in a world where all of your stuff is 
essentially even if you may have the license you can't play it anymore if you so they have even gone so far as to add a warning suggesting that whenever anybody attempts to enter developer mode in the Oculus Quest. To be honest, I never got the chance to try out developer mode as I don't have a quest. However, one of the things that one of the bigger one of the bigger hurdles that happened as a result of this was that side be oh, side quest had and be on had to remove their support as a result of this content guideline update. Um, one of the major things that is still saving saving them some kind of face is that the developers of Beat Saber games have themselves promised some kind of custom level support in it. And Facebook is working on releasing Oculus Link wired connection in order to make the quest treated like Oculus Rift by some VR ready people. So, oh. in the event you have that set up ready, then your uh, your VR ready computer will still be able to access and operate an Oculus Quest. So, hopefully, something good comes out of this. But it's probably not. I guess talk about how. Apple has confirmed that it's working on AR glasses and they're supposed to launch at some point in the first half of next year. But what's going to happen with them is yet to be confirmed. So far, all we know is that the original note, which was published in Chinese, says that they are working with third party brands on AR glasses. Other companies like Facebook worked with Ray Ban, similar headsets, but as far as what we can expect out of Apple, remains to be seen. If you guys are still here and you're feeling charitable in some way, you can activate that charity in a few different ways. The first one, you can go to humblebundle.com and pick out one of the bundles that they have for sale there. When you get one of these bundles, you're not you're not only able to get some good software or books or games or what whatever it is that you're you're choosing, but you're also able to support a charity of your choice. They have a few different ones available, so you don't have to feel necessarily tied down to helping children or animals. The, even though, well, animals are always a good one, aren't they? And then. If that is up your speed, I'm selling these headphones on Amazon. Link on screen. I personally use them. I really like them. And they've been working out really well for me. If that still doesn't really work out well for you, I've got a link on screen also for my Patreon. Well, up here somewhere. I, I don't know where I'll put it. But you'll find it somewhere. I hope. Probably. Maybe. Uh, I think this is a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.